You smell that? Yeah, what is that? This is the smell of Bella Italia. Everything about this beautiful mount, made in Italy, right here in this video. This is Fear into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So this video is all about the Avalon M0 mount. But before we can actually start with it, we have to move the big elephant out of the room. And the big elephant is the ZWO AM5. Now in the last few weeks, about every influencer on YouTube has reviewed the CWO AM5. No, not him, but him and him and definitely her. From her I have this wonderful intro. Thanks, Sarah. No kidding, I found over 10 reviews of CWO AM5. So I obviously had to be the rebel again <laughs> and buy another mount. Why, you might ask? just for the sake of being different? You could say because it gets boring watching the 11th review. But let me put it like this as an introduction. The moment I had this thing in my hands, it was love. It's just incredible what these guys have done. It just feels so solid. It's designed so beautifully. And beside that, there are just these few extras which an AM5 cannot offer. And so yes, the M0 is a little bit more expensive than the AM5, but these additional advantages, which you might call luxury, are for me worth paying a little bit more. So what are these points? And I think for the first one, to understand my point of view, you have to see where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the CPC 800 on a wedge. And with all the issues that I had with it, one thing that I really, really liked is that it did not do a meridian flip. And I kind of wanted to have a mount where I do not have to do a meridian flip. And the M0 offers this possibility. I can shoot with it all night and I do not have to do a meridian flip. Now, what's the issue with a meridian flip? First of all, practically at the peak, at the best shooting conditions, you have to make a break for the meridian flip. Until it's done, everything is settled again, focused again, you will lose precious minutes. But there's a much bigger problem with it, which a lot of people don't even consider, and that's the gradient. Because given that the camera switches, now the gradient comes from the other side. And then if you then actually merge the two sets simply together, you have a way bigger gradient than you had otherwise. Because once you had it from this side, once you have it from this side, now you have it all over. It's not a gradient anymore, it's just polluted. In addition to that, especially with higher focal lengths, I saw recently a video about off-axis guiding. And the guy was like, okay, then I have actually to see if I have stars here. But then I also have to consider the meridian flip, where the stars will then be on the opposite side. So this is a position I cannot take. So it makes off-axis guiding double as big an issue as it was before. Not that I'm off-axis guiding, but just hating. And then there's also the case that a lot of people say the mount might fall out of balance with the meridian flip. That's also not an issue here if you don't have it. So I really feel that having this hustle off my back of the meridian flip is already worth the higher price. For me, no doubt. And the Avalon mounts are almost the only ones that I know that do not require a meridian flip. Now the second big advantage is the belt drive system. So it's not a harmonic drive like the AM5, but it's a very unique way they use to power the mounts. It is with multiple belts that actually bring the speed down. This is on one side extremely accurate, but I do not want to make now the point it's more accurate than a harmonic drive, but it's at least similar. But the big advantage that it has is it has absolutely guaranteed no backlash. And this is just from the way that it's designed. Now I know that the CWO AM5 also advertises at no backlash, but when you actually Google it, the reality looks much different. 
And so if you really want no backlash, that's the way to go. And then the third unique point which really sets it apart and which I think is so cool is the possibility to mount two scopes. At the moment I have only one scope, my FRA 400, and I put the guide scope down here. And it actually acts as a counterweight. But I already have an idea to put a second FRA 400 down here, so having two. And then with two cameras, I could actually shoot a photo in half the time, which is with the rare clear skies in Switzerland would really be a blessing. So there's always potential here. And the cool part is that this mount is really self-balancing, means it practically needs no counterweight. I have at the moment one kg down here, which I can move to be perfectly balanced. But if I now would put a heavier scope on top of here, I could simply move this arm actually down and with that move the weight of the mount and so I would not need more counterweights that I have right now. So that brings me to the capacity, which at the first moment looks like very low. They only write eight kilograms. But when you read further, this is just if you have only a scope here on top with nothing below. Then with eight kilograms, you still can accomplish without any counterweights to balance it. But if you're accepting some counterweights or a scope below or the guiding scope below, you actually can go up to 12 and I've seen examples up to 15 kilograms. So I feel given that this is a travel mount, it offers more than enough capacity. And it really is a perfect travel mount. It can easily be disassembled and it is quite lightweight. It also offers Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity, so you can control it remotely, especially when you use it visual. And one thing that is also cool when we talk visual, I can actually reconfigure this thing to 90 degrees and then I can use it as an alt azimuth mount. But last but not least, before we go to the unboxing, this mount is just really, really beautiful. I just love having it standing here in my office and just looking at it. It's just amazing. And I think that's where the Made in Italy really shines. It's just these guys, they have an idea of style. And sometimes when I touch it, it just feels like I touch my own Ferrari. But then I wake up again. But, it, but it's okay. It's okay. It's almost as cool, trust me. Now when you're interested how it actually comes boxed, how it's unboxed, how it's actually installed, I will show you that right now in the unboxing sequence. And then once the clouds have mercy, I will actually create another video where I really show you in depth outside how it performs, how it works, and how the pictures look that are made with it. So let's now rewind the time and go back to the unboxing moment. Okay, and here we are with the package as I received it from the post unopened. So it's also for me the first time I have to go with the manual. And so let's see if I'm successful and I can install this beauty. So this time I really need a cutter. And actually what the manual tells me, and I love this, is I have to take everything out of the box. And I like this very much as this is the stage where nothing really can go wrong. It's, it's this first success and also kind of this exciting what's actually in the box. So that's already pretty cool. Having this Avalon engraved here in the top. There's a lot of stuff in here. So let's start with the small part. Here we have some cables. More cables. This is the, the power box. Here we have some counterweight. Some whatever. We'll have to see what's actually in here. The small parts. Screws. nice little tool and the cool part is even here it's engraved 
Avalon. Okay, what else? Some more. Goose. Ah, these are the, the legs of the tripod. Then this is the remote control. This is, wow, this is cool. <laughs> this is a really tool set. This I will hold dear. <laughs> this is amazing. So another part, I will see where it fits. Now we're through with the, with the small stuff as it looks like. So now comes the big stuff. So these are bags, also with the Avalon on it. And so this empty bag. I mean, this is the cool part, what I'm really looking forward to, because the idea really is to use this as a travel mount. I was, for the whole time since I started astrophotography, I was hauled back by my 60 kilogram CPC 800. It was just on my terrace, stationary, and it never even crossed my mind to take it somewhere else. It's just too heavy. And now, having bags, having a small scope, going to dark places, they, taking it with me when we go to the mountains or to the ocean, that's really cool. That's really a nice bag. So, there is a second pack. This is Santa Tour. Okay. So, this is for the future when we will pack the whole thing. Then comes here some documentation, and I think that's a USB key. And now comes the big part. This is the tripod. This is really amazing stuff. Wow. This is cool. It's so compact, but still so massive. And it kind of also feels massive. This is. This is no toy. This is just, it's called teapot, like T-Rex. <laughs> okay, so all that's missing now is the mount. So let's get this beauty out of here. Okay, there we go. So let's get this beauty here in fact. Wow. This is like a tank. That's really cool. It's all just massive metal. This really feels like a tank can drive over it and it will not take a scratch. <laughs> Amazing. And yeah, made in Italy. Cool. Let's also unpack this stuff here. So that he comes also with a cigarette lighter adapter and just the usual power box. This is kind of interesting with a red light. Let's see for what this is. This is definitely a USB cable, two with the phone jacks. So the manual will guide us where we need that, but there's not too many parts. So should I say it? It cannot be that difficult. Perhaps I shouldn't say that. No, I didn't say that. So the user guy tells us to first install the tripod. So the teapot. So let's do that. I will not move them out now too much. So that it's easier for us to see here what we're doing. I guess I will also have to move these guys here. In these places. So we have some feet. And now let's pull it up. And here it is, our teapot. Rock solid, cool stuff. Now the next thing I have to do, there is an Athimus adjustment pin in there. That's this one. And it tells me to put it right here. 
so it's finished. So, well, whatever's worth, it's done. Okay, and now comes the mount. Oh, that's really heavy. So what it tells me is, I should first of all loosen these screws a bit so that there's a space in between. And now I shall put it on top here so that the pin I just installed is right in between. Now, with the screw that's below, I should actually fix the whole thing. That's firm. And then I should actually put these screws here back so that they slightly touch the pin. So that's for polar alignment. Okay, now comes cable management. And also that is quite ingeniously Handled. We have two cable, one for array, one for deck. And given that the cables have a different color and a different length, it's not possible to connect them the wrong way. So what they say is, we should actually move the cable here through the hole. So yes, they come out on the other side here. And here it's color coded. So this here goes into white. Click. This here goes into black. Click. Then the white one goes down here and the black one goes in here and that's done. Then we have this interesting thing which I wondered what it is. And what it actually is, is a polar alignment scope. This goes in here. Okay, that's better. And this here is actually an LED illuminator for the scope. It goes also through this big hole. It's rather great cable management that nothing is in the way. And then it also goes in here. Now this mount can actually be used for ALDAS or equatorial mount mode. And you can actually switch that here with these screws here. You can change the altitude range between 24 and 90 degrees, 90 degrees is Aldazimuth. So here in Switzerland, it's 47 degrees north. That's the second interval. And I don't know if it's coincidence, I don't know if because Rome is also in the same range or because they pre-configured it because they knew it would go to Switzerland, but it is already in the right hole. So there's nothing for me to do here. Cool. So far the unboxing. But my initial reaction to the looks, how solid it is, how high quality, I'm really excited. This is really a cool thing. And even it's so solid, it's still, when you put it in these two parts, it's very easy to handle. It's very easy to take with you. And that's really what I'm looking forward to. And when I will go on these journeys, I will take you with me and I will show you a different side of Switzerland than simply my basement. <laughs> so, and here we are back again in the present time. I hope you felt my excitement, which is actually still present right now. And I hope I got you interested to get your own little Ferrari. <laughs> See you next time and clear skies.